Welcome to part 27 of Basic Training, the weekly series where I teach you how to play every track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. In this installment of Tracks Designed to Destroy Your Hands, we'll be covering everything you need to know to play Music Park on 150cc, or Melody Motorway for those of you who are outside the US. As always, we'll be covering the advanced strategies that I use in my current personal best, as well as some alternative strats that you can use if those are proving to be just a bit too much. We're also going to be covering a couple of different world record runs since they play a little bit differently from my personal best. Now without further ado, let's get into the guide starting with the recommended build. The build I recommend for this course is going to be Rosalina, Bitty Buggy, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider. This is the last non-baby build to set a world record on this track, and in comparison to our usual Waluigi build, Rosalina trades a slight bit of ground speed for an increase to mini turbo and handling. Now you can probably get away with the Waluigi build, but the lower handling does make some of the strats a little bit harder to execute. Moving on to the world record builds, one replay we're going to go over is the aforementioned non-baby world record, and they use King Boo instead of Rosalina. These two characters are identical stat-wise, and I just find playing with King Boo to be a little bit awkward for whatever reason. Now, like I hinted at before, pretty much all the world records over the last year and a half have been set using Baby Daisy. So as you can imagine, things are going to get pretty ridiculous. But that's enough about the builds, let's check out the track. We're going to start by talking about the simpler version of the run first. Do the rocket boost to start, and then after passing the grass, start a left drift while grabbing the leftmost coin. When going down the first piano section, do two super mini turbos since it's faster than building up a single ultra mini turbo. Also, make sure to hang out as close to the edge of the track as possible, definitely no further inside than the orange line. In the piranha plant section, make sure to stay out of the light because that's going to show you where the piranha plants can actually get you. There are ways to avoid that, but we'll talk about that a bit later on in the video. In either case, grab the middle coin and then drift around both pianos, making sure to stay close to the middle of the track. This is because you need to go over the raised piano keys in a very specific way to save time and avoid having your cart fly all over the place. This is something we'll go over a bit more in detail when I talk about my PB as well. Now build up super mini turbos around those turns and then prepare for the first tambourine bounce pad. The way that I recommend doing this is by tricking off the orange boost ramp and then shaking the controller to trick off the bounce pad so that you can make sure to buffer your trick input. Make sure that while you're in midair that you start holding down the drift button and right on the joystick so that you can land in a right drift. Try and grab as many coins as you can before getting into the bouncy musical note section, but they are pretty difficult to grab, so if you miss them here, we'll grab the rest of the coins on lap 2. It should be noted that when we get to this section of the track, one of the two ramps will be lit up as a glider ramp, and the other one will not. Which one is lit up actually alternates every few seconds, and you want to avoid going off the glider ramp for a couple reasons. First, every time the notes hit the ground, you can actually trick after getting some air time. The other reason is, oftentimes you'll be able to do some drifts and build up extra mini turbos. I tried going for it at the very start of this section of the track, but I wasn't able to build up that extra mini turbo in time. When we move on to my PB, you'll see what I'm talking about though. The third reason is that like I mentioned before, this portion of the track actually has some extra coins that you can get, and frankly, the coin lines on this track are super annoying, so you should take advantage of any extra help that you can get. Now when coming out of the musical note section, finish up the lap by drifting around the turn and building up a super mini turbo, and then just using your mushroom through the grass at the end of the lap. Laps 2 and 3 play really similarly to lap 1, but before moving on to the PB strats, there's one thing that you should consider trying to incorporate into your gameplay, even if you're just starting out, and that is the tambourine shortcut. You might have noticed that around the long right turn at the end of the lap, there's a second tambourine bounce pad. If you start a wide right drift before coming out of the music note section, and then tighten up your drift angle so that you go off the very first portion of the red and white track barrier, you can actually drift straight onto the bounce pad for another trick then just land in a left drift and mushroom through the grass like before. I suggest learning this as soon as possible because, by my estimation, this little shortcut saves close to 2 seconds over going around the turns, so it's really, really helpful. Moving on to the PB strats, there's a ton of minor differences that add up to make a run that plays very differently from what you just watched. For example, at the very start of the run, you want to angle yourself slightly right and then do a left drift. You want to start it tight for just a bit and then quickly widen it until you build up a mini turbo. Then you'll do a right hop into a right drift, followed by a left hop into a left drift. This allows you to build up some extra mini turbos while maintaining good lines at the start of the track. Then in the piano section, if you do some soft drifting, you can actually build up a super mini turbo and an ultra mini turbo, instead of two super mini turbos like before. Just before coming up on the piranha plant coin, start a wide left drift, and what you want to do is a right hop to release it, such that you land on this green section of the track divider that's close to the ramp. After that first right hop, immediately do another one and the momentum from the mini turbo should carry you clean over the grass and onto the ramp. Trick off the ramp and then land in a wide right drift, but then immediately upon landing start holding right on the joystick. 
You want to drift off the track in such a way that you'll be moving towards this portion of the fence right here. Because what will happen is that you'll go off the track and land right on top of this raised piano key on the left. This will allow you to trick and hop clean over the fence. It's a lot easier than it looks provided that you don't end up too far on the left hand side of the track after tricking off the previous ramp, but it looks super weird so you might need to practice a few times to get the hang of it. Now after tricking off that raised piano key, land in a left drift and try to again hang out as close to the edge of the track as possible. If your soft drifting is good, you should be able to build up a super mini turbo after going off the first musical note, and you want to release it as soon as possible. I'm not exactly sure why this happens, but if you did this strat right, it'll basically carry you over the other two musical notes and you'll land close to the center of the track before the tambourine bounce pad. Now let's watch this last bit of the run in slow motion while I talk about some of the ways that it can go wrong. The first problem is the ramp cut. You need to make sure to land on that specific green section of track barrier that I pointed out earlier so that when you do your right hop, you can actually get onto the ramp. If you approach it at a bad angle, you'll lose a bunch of speed and then you won't be able to trick off the ramp. And speaking of that ramp, ideally after tricking, you want to be pretty close to the center of the track. Sometimes you can land in a bad spot on the ramp and take a super wide line. And if this happens, the best advice that I have is to brake drift a bit because you must make sure to trick off the portion of raised piano key that's hanging off the track. If you don't, it's gonna screw up your line when trying to do the super mini turbo off the next raised piano key. And what's most likely to happen in that scenario is that you'll run into the wall on the right hand side of the track. But even if you don't, you'll be super far off the right hand side of the track. And this is gonna be problematic because of the bounce pad that's coming up. After coming off the last raised piano key, you want to start a wide right drift off the orange boost ramp. Just like before, we want to trick off the bounce pad, but unlike before, we don't want to shake trick because we need to make sure to be holding right when we do this trick. I don't know why this happens, but doing this so-called right trick will cause your car to get launched forward at super high speeds. If your soft drifting is on point, you can actually build up a mini turbo before doing this trick to do a super bounce and get launched even further, but I haven't quite figured out how to make that work myself yet. Now the issue is that to actually get launched at all, you need to do this right trick off a fairly specific location on the tambourine. Now there is some wiggle room here, but the idea is that you want to hold your wide left drift off the left half of the orange boost ramp so that you can do your right trick off the edge of the tambourine. If you trick in a bad spot, you'll just get flung really high into the air, which is pretty much guaranteed to ruin your run. The rest of the lap plays out pretty much like we saw in the simpler version of the run. Trick off the non-glider ramp and then land in a left drift, build up a mini turbo, and then do the tambourine cut at the end of the lap. One thing I didn't mention that you're seeing me screw up here is that the timing of this trick is actually kind of weird. See, unlike the first tambourine, this one isn't really laying flat, but kind of positioned in a downward slope. So you must make sure to wait until just after you bounce the trick off of it. Otherwise, you won't get the trick at all, and you'll just have to mushroom through the shortcut like I do here. There's only two real differences between lap one and laps two and three in my PB. The first is that in the Prana Plant section, if you're in the middle of an Ultra Mini Turbo Boost like you should be if you're doing the strap properly, you can more or less ignore the lit up portions of the track because the Prana Plants won't be able to get you in time. After building up your Ultra Mini Turbo, you're gonna wanna do a right hop into a left drift to execute the strat like before. The second difference is in the Musical Note section where I build up some additional Mini Turbos. The old King Boo world record basically plays like a cleaner version of my PB with the only real differences being that they get a super bounce on the first bounce pad and then do a different setup for the second bounce pad. Other than that though, that's all I really have to say about those strats, so let's check out my current personal best while I talk a bit more about the track. Just as a quick reminder, if you found the video helpful so far, please don't forget to drop a like and a comment as it really helps the video get spread to other people like yourself who are looking to improve at the game. Thank you very much. You guys are the best. Now moving on. Music Park doesn't really destroy my hands in the same way that Sherbert Land did, but with all the ridiculous mini turbo strats I've had to learn over the past couple of weeks between that course and this one, I'm pretty sure that the flesh on my thumb is starting to fall off. It's honestly pretty crazy how difficult some of the retro courses can actually be. Back when I first started time trialing a year ago, my goal was to get personal bests that were all within less than 6 seconds off the record. On DK Jungle, Wario Stadium, Sherbert Land, and Music Park, my old PBs were more than 10 seconds off the record. So, you know, pretty massive fail there. Now I have made some pretty big improvements on all those tracks while putting the videos together, but it has not been easy, or pleasant for that matter. So what is it that makes Music Park so difficult? Well, let me just sum it up by telling you the same thing that I told my league. Individually, none of the advanced strats are too difficult to pull off, but they can be pretty finicky and inconsistent at times. So what ends up happening a lot is that you've got to execute a ton of precise tricks in really rapid succession. And since you've got to do it on all three laps, the chances of any one thing going wrong are pretty high. 
For example, you'll notice that on all three laps in the final boost pad, I just land and mushroom. I'm actually trying to build up a mini turbo there, but the problem is that I either miss the trick or else I land in a bad position which prevents me from even doing the drift at all. By far the most annoying set of strats encompasses everything from the ramp shortcut through the first tambourine bounce pad, and especially all the stuff involving the raised piano keys. They're just weirdly shaped objects, and about 50% of the time I find myself going in a totally unexpected direction that forces me to restart my run. And just like DK Jungle, the fact that you spend so much time driving over these weirdly shaped objects that are placed in the middle of the track makes Music Park one of my lower ranked courses in the game, despite the fact that it is a really cool design. But that's everything I've got to say about the track, let's finish up the video by talking about the strategies used in the current world record. So interestingly enough, the current world record actually doesn't play too differently from the old King Boo record or from my personal best, for the most part. In the first piano section, they build up two Ultra Mini Turbos instead of a Super Mini Turbo into Ultra Mini Turbo, but everything else is pretty much the same until they get to the bouncing musical note section, where they take full advantage of the Baby Daisy build and go crazy chaining drifts together. They also use a similar setup as the old King Boo record for the second tambourine bounce pad, where they trick off the track divider and then just drift off the bounce pad. When they land, they then build up a Super Mini Turbo instead of a regular Mini Turbo. I haven't done much testing, but I'm pretty sure that this strat is just generally faster than the method that I use, but it's a bit trickier to execute, and I just never really got around to incorporating it into my own runs. And that's everything you need to know about Music Park on 150cc, probably one of the few courses that I've run through that I actually enjoy less after learning the strats. In fact, I actually used to rank Music Park above both Wario Stadium and DK Jungle, but now it's lower than both of them. Remember in my DK Jungle video how I described that having random stuff in the middle of the road that leads to inconsistent strats makes the track feel really unenjoyable to drive on? That's basically Music Park in a nutshell. Now I don't like to end my videos on sour notes, so what I will say is that I think the track design is really cool, especially how the track terrain actually adds to the music in the piano sections and the tambourine bounce pads. So I can appreciate what they were trying to go for with the aesthetic, even if I don't actually enjoy the course that much. But that's going to be it for me for today everyone. If you found the video helpful or informative, don't forget to click the like button and let me know down in the comments how much time you were able to save from the advice I laid out in this video. Also, I do release a new tutorial every week, so make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.